an international team of researchers are focused on the Gulf of Mexico. There we go. These are some of their stories, intimate portraits of research, innovation, discovery. I'm Matt Damon. Please join me on a journey marked by unexpected twists and turns. On April 20th, 2010, the United States experienced the largest offshore oil spill in its history. To break up as much oil as possible, dispersants were sprayed onto oil slicks on the surface of the water, as well as directly into the escaping oil. The use of dispersants quickly caught the attention of the news media. Deadly mix. Did the chemicals used to break up that oil in the Gulf do more harm than good? Little is known about the effect of these chemicals applied in such great amounts. The EPA insists dispersants are biodegradable, but many locals worry their community could become another love canal. I just don't know that anyone can say today whether dispersants was a good choice or a bad choice. Uh, it may have probably or may have been the lesser of evils. Uh, only time will tell did the dispersants actually have a long-term effect on uh, our ecology and environment or not. Some of what we found suggests that for some organisms, not for all, but for some, dispersant plus oil uh, is a very, very toxic mix. For other organisms, oh, we found that the dispersant itself was actually more toxic than the oil. And for yet other organisms, the oil was the most serious threat. So this complex role of dispersant is one that scientists have been unraveling, and we've learned a lot from that process. The problem with using dispersants is that you've got oil floating on the surface of the ocean, and when you break that oil apart, you are putting it down into the water column, and you are allowing animals that are swimming in the water column to be exposed to the oil. That's the bad news. The good news is, by using dispersants, that that oil that got dispersed is not oil that came ashore. Which is the lesser of two evils? Do you want that oil to come ashore, or do you want the oil to stay and get dispersed offshore? And most scientists that have been associated with oil spills every time will say, protect your coastal wetlands. Don't let that oil come ashore. And I'm one of those. I think that we want to protect our coastal areas. My conclusion is that the Gulf of Mexico is used to dealing with oil and most of the areas have recovered. However, we still need to do research in case there's another spill to know whether or not we should use dispersants, how much we should use, and how they should be used. I am a scientist, so I like to see proof before I decide for one direction or the other. Uh, from my internal feelings, um, I always think it's not a good idea to put more toxic chemicals in the water to remove another toxic chemical. We do not know enough to say for sure it's a good thing or a bad thing. We only know we have to know more. <laughs> what has to happen is that all of this has to go into some response plan and so that we know how to deal with the spill and protect the environment at the same time. I'm of the belief that using chemical dispersants at the wellhead in the case of the Deepwater Horizon was a benefit. Today, the scientific community is working together to push the boundaries of what they've learned about oil spills and what still needs to be discovered. <laughs>